Welcome back, everyone, to TNO, the last years of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, and right now, the hunt for treason. Hutig stared at the photographs before him, turning pieces of his last conversation over in his mind. He succeeded beyond his wildest expectations, numerous inefficiencies, mass consumption of subversive medias, forged documents, and in some cases, even subhuman administrators. It was a treasure trove of treachery and corruption. He had never been an emotional man, but the present moment moved him deeply. A wry smile crossed his face, and he leaned backwards in his seat, all the paranoia, the self-doubt, the maddening fights with his superiors. It all meant something. The smiling showman and the cowardly degenerate might finally be relieved of duty, freeing the fatherland and who took themselves of their entitlement and insolence. <clears throat> the satisfaction was overwhelming. He rose from his desk and headed towards the door. However, before he reached the handle, a flood of negative emotions returned, paralyzing him. Something felt wrong. If the bureaucrats in Germany had ignored his warnings once, could they do so again? Even if the evidence seemed damning to him, would it be so to a man thousand miles away? He needed more. So it was that Hutig returned to his desk and began drafting even grander plans. If he was a purge of filth from this continent, he would need an irrefutable, overwhelming assault. A new investigation would commence, even more through than the last. The devil would have his due. Hutig had waited years for such a moment. He could wait a bit longer. Begin the investigation and join the Helsteger National Party. Bewildered by the incompetence of the man he was training, Captain Marcus Weidman rued his misfortune. When he'd been called into the Major's office and he'd been told he'd been handpicked for an env enviable assignment that gave him the opportunity to serve the Reich, he swelled with pride, picturing himself leading the charge against rebels in the interior. Instead, he'd ended up teaching idiotic Boer farmer boys where the trigger was on the Car 98K, stalking up and down the line, watching his men completely fail to hit their targets, Captain Wildman wondered if this assignment was punishment for some forgotten slight. To his mind, the men of the Hestaga National Party were nothing more than foolish, disorderly rabble with a heritage of unclear Aryanism, unfocused, untrained, and undisciplined. They were little better, better than the barbaric partisans and rebellious slaves, and that he'd, and that he'd had the incredible and unenviable, unenviable, un, oh, oh my goodness, and unenviable task of whipping a mob of sunburned yokels into a disciplined fighting force foisted upon him. It was utterly ludicrous, and yet he had no choice but to accept his fate and slip into South Africa, eventually arriving at the HNP's secret training camp in a desolate valley, where every breath filled his lungs with a thick coating of red dust as he watched one of the Boers look down the barrel of a gun, his gun, the chicken was loaded, oh my goodness, Captain Weidman wondered how the Rex Commissar Hutig had ever come upon the idea that the HNP could be useful in the coming war as anything other than cannon fodder. Sighing as one of the boars nearly missed shooting himself in the foot, Captain Weidman called for a break and went to wash the dust from his throat with a lukewarm beer. It had been looking at the image of its own tenebrous and passionate soul. And right now, we shall go, 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 do, kick the hornet's nest. South Africa is on the brink of full-scale anarchy. Between the Boer revolt, the Anglo fears for military losses, and NATO discontent, the risk of total clouds for the full dominion goes every day, and we aim to give this rotten, crumbling edifice the fatal blow. By assassinating a prominent politician in broad daylight, the country will descend even more into p political chaos as a politician or political institutions squabble to save themselves from our ire. And right now we have a cup of coffee here, directly from Austria, Africa, to have a good time. Oh my goodness, what is this? And investigate their treason. We are not alone in Africa. And for years have been forced to share the administration of the German African or German Africa with a fellow countrymen in Central Africa and Sudwest Africa. Yet while the Reich appears to be blind to the stunning incompetence of both Müller and Schenk, Hans is no fool. Our agents shall infiltrate the regimes, and from the bottom to the top, we shall gather the evidence of their degeneracy, their incompetence, their treasons, and we shall deliver it straight to the Führer's desk. Oh boy. Kind of handsome, huh? Wow. This is a lot more than I thought that it would be. <laughs> well, we can buy stuff, but we're not going to do that. We can do this, but I don't want to do that either. Let's see. Promise Germania evidence. Further... Further investigations, secure funding from Germania, send the evidence. Uh, yeah, let's not do that one because we need to actually do stuff here. So, well, let's promise some evidence perhaps, and that will promote some more loyalty. We get some more war support, shall we? We've got quite a few comments to go through as well. So, first off, we need to complete the devastation of Africa. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if that when's going to happen. I think it's going to happen after the war, maybe. I'm not really sure. So, I would like to. I think there's like three levels we can get to the devastation of Africa. So, we'll, we'll try to get there as high as we possibly can. Because that sounds like a lot of fun. Next one is, someone said we need to prolong the South African War. Uh, to get it, to be able to progress all the way to the 1970s. Maybe, I guess, that person's right. I don't know. Because I haven't tried this off screen. So, we'll see. I uh, hope the person's right. So, we'll try to prolong as long as we can. Or at least try to get to the point where they can no longer try to beat us up too well. So, let's see. Lightly investigate Müller. Investigate him. Thoroughly investigate him. Well, let's do Müller. 
Oh, secure funds. I'd like to do that. Ten million. Oh wow. Well, we have how much money? I don't think it's in our liquid reserves, right? No, it's not. Which is good. Our investigation funds stand at ten million. Okay. Well, let's do Miller then. Let's see what happens. No evidence, huh? That sucks. Cool, let's read the next focus then. After this, we shall prepare the wolverines, or werewolves. In the event of enemy victory, they won't be able to celebrate at, as a last duty towards the fatherland and his race. Any true area must resist enemy occupation with all of the strength. Just as our great fear did during the war, Ost Africa shall establish a fully functional werewolf guerrilla for the eventuality of defeat. With hidden supply depots scattered across the jungles and loyal officers and troops hiding all throughout Africa, we shall strike like a thousand hornets from all sides. If we aren't destined to dominate the dark, dark, dark continent, it is our sacred duty to ensure that no one else is absolutely no one. And can we build still? Oh, we're trying. Spend. Cut. See what we can do with, about that. Let's see. Someone recommends I do the Siberian Free Territory and go down the Security Council path. Uh, maybe we'll see what happens. I don't know. Hey, look, we got two here. And improved jet fighters. Nice. Nice. I don't know if we can actually get jet fighters, but... You know what? Actually... Hopefully we can make some. Yes. Well, we make maybe one a year, four a year. Get some more cast maybe going. That'd be kind of nice. Kicking the hornet's nest. A darkened room somewhere in South Africa. The orange rays of afternoon slither in between the Venetian blinds. A thin, lean man with oily, sandy blonde hair stands before a cork bard, puffing at a cigarette. The smoke rising to be rolled around the room by a violently rotating ceiling fan. The man cocks his head as he regards the cork board. Outside of the sounds of the late afternoon traffic, but the man does not hear them, focused as he is on the intricacy of the design. A dozen or so black and white photogra portrait photographs, many of them taken from furlative angles, crowd the cork board, while white string wrapped around the pins of each photograph connects them to each other. One photograph in the center of the cork board is connected to all the others. Its subject, its subject is a middle-aged man with a pale, craggy face facing towards the camera. The smoker finishes a cigarette and lit another. He moved closer to the corkboard. Absorbed by the central photograph, the man's name, written on the photograph in the black marker, was Ian Smith, a former British colonist from Zimbabwe who escaped into South Africa after the Reich had taken over. After building himself a new farm in Freiburg, Smith had vocally criticized the Ruxus Commissar Hans Hutig and the new regime and become a prominent advocate for the rights of the British colonists and exiles still in North Africa. In other words, he'd become a nuisance. Unrolling the string and unpinning the photograph, the, roll, the smoker slipped it into his jacket pocket. So, the Reichs Commissar wanted to destabilize South Africa with a political assassination, did he? Well, what better way to achieve that than to assassinate one of the most publicly outspoken Anglos and pin it on the Boers? He picked up the telephone, dialing his handler and Kylmine, or Kylmane, or Quellmane, and in doing so knocked down the first domino that would ascend South Africa, aspiring into anarchy. How many powers of darkness claimed him for their own? Oh boy, I can't wait. Hmm. What a shame. What a shame. A failed operation, huh? Hmm. Which look at that. I love guns. I love chemicals. It was past midnight. Deeply ensconched in his favorite armchair, Utig sipped a glass of cognac. Ignoring the murmuring chatter around him, his most important subordinates were gathered to drink, smoke, and await the phone call they knew was coming. Nursing his glass and beginning to feel slightly tipsy, Hutig slowly looked around the room. Bea and Chemilski were there, as well as Mangle for ones. He took a deep, few deep breaths, trying to get back on... Trying to get back under control. Perhaps he thought, this ought to be his last drink. He mustn't disgrace himself in front of everyone. The shrill ringing out of the telephone put a sudden end to the utterling's prattle. When Hans made no move, Baal stepped forward and picked up the receiver. He stood there for a while, listening and growing more and more puzzled. Ya, ya, danka. Hanging up, Baal turned to the together dignitaries and announced with utter bewilderment that the operation had failed, with the Ost African assassins being unable to find Smith, and yet somehow, Smith had been still been killed. Still staring into the middle distance, Hutig heard his underlings debate what could have possibly really happened, eventually deciding it must have been the Boers having the same idea. Realizing the men were all looking to him, expecting him to say a few words, Hutig said, the empty glass down and stood. Thankfully, he didn't stumble or sweat. Men, today we triumph once more. Through our, though our bullet went astray, it was clear that the Judeo degenerates. My apologies. Oof. Judeo degenerate state of South Africa need a little more encouragement to collapse from the rot within. 
Long live National Socialism and long live the Fuhrer. Was he slurring? I am slurring. He couldn't tell. He felt a moment of trepidation as he looked into the bear and Chemuski's eyes. Could they tell? Although still, most looked utterly baffled at the turn of events. His men seemed emboldened, feeling drowsy and embarrassed, who takes ink once more into his armchair, so Ian Smith was dead. That ought to shake the decaying decadence of South Africa up a bit, but for some reason he found it difficult to care about it this right in this right minute. His vision seemed to swim before him. Could the others tell he let himself get drunk? Surely not, surely not. Maybe I'm drunk. Besides, this was a once-off, a celebration. It wasn't a violation of Spartan discipline. It was an all right it was alright to drink a bit on more on occasions such as these, wasn't it? I think I am drunk. His face was like the autumn sky, overcast one moment and bright the next. Oh well, he's gone. So we got that going on. Ring of fire. Oh, Ian's Oh, he's been shot in Freiburg, yeah. Ooh, decryption. Our enemy your enemies are our enemies. This is manpower, which we don't have any. Oh, civilian factories, exploring the interior. Ooh, reinforce the Anglos. I kind of like colonial rewards. I want to get some more stability. So, Utex sat motionless behind his desk, staring at the ceiling, as he had been for some time. Working at one o'clock in the afternoon with a churning stomach and a bad case of cotton mouth, he had stumbled out to his office, and when he found that attempting anything resembling a thought gave him the sensation of a pair of ice picks being forced through his eyes, the Reichs Commissar had decided to spend some time recovering his faculties. So this was a real hangover. It bore little resemblance to those pathetic little headaches he used to get as a boy when he flinched a few of, uh, filched a few of his father's beers, which he now realized were a dim shadow of the real thing. Groaning, he leaned forward to stare at his desk. It was stacked high with paperwork, missives, reports, memos, orders, telegrams, letters, requests, demands, transcripts, bulletins, dispatches, and tidings fair and ill that he had accumulated since the prior afternoon. Wanting nothing more than to dive over the palace balcony to gravel below at the thought of entering them, must less the horrific prospect of having to categorize them. He found his eyes drawn to the morning newspaper reporting the tantalizing headline, Ian Smith, shot in Vryberg. Though every cell in his body screamed at him, Hutig watched himself pick up the newspaper and began to read. His stomach swirled like a whirlpool as he attempted to digest what the newspaper was telling him. Oddly, almost all of the details on De Smith's death mentioned in the article were different than those he had been given by his intelligence officers at the party the evening before. Were his men so incompetent they couldn't get the correct intel on their own operation? Or had someone else gotten to Smith before they could and had taken credit for it either mistakenly or intentionally in the hope of increasing their prestige on the backs of the real assassins? If his suspicions were correct and Smith had been taken out by a third party, then it appeared to prove that South Africa's spiral into the abyss was happily progressing on its own and didn't need the extra push. At least, that's what he thought he would have thought, and had he been capable of cognition. With only a few neurons firing haphazardly, he leaned back in his chair, feeling this that similar, familiar creak deep in his bones and teeth clenched, resolved never to drink again. Of course, he had a glass of cognac in hand within an hour. Like me, like me with coffee. The wilderness burst into a peal of laughter that would shake the fixed stairs in their places. Uh, let's do the Ring of Fire. Uh, no, we're going to go this way. The Preikshat Schlicker Initiative. In our efforts to modernize Ost Africa, we've given Fritz Kahl Preikshat and Heinz Schlicker, military engineers attached to our garrison, the task of creating an independent electrical power line and a power plant within Ost Africa to assure that we can exploit more modern technologies for our survival or surveillance efforts. The costs have been extremely high, and of course, the power lines could only be reached or could only reach the main settlements, but Reichskumosa Hans has nonetheless appreciated the effort, and with the inauguration of Pareikshat Schlicke Power Plant in Keilmain, he has officially ended the power project, declaring it a success. Report uh, Makana in Central Africa. Agents, classified, have returned from the operation in Leopoldville, and the results are promising. While exploring the shores of Congo Lake and search for potential smugglers connected to Rex Commissar Müller, henceforth to be referred to as the suspect, our team has made a very interesting find hidden by the vegetation, but near enough to the coast to be quickly towed to and from the waters needed, was an Americana vessel. While devoid of any flag or identification number, its shape corresponds perfectly to the last generation of amphibious boats spotted by Albert Albertes. To further prove their origin, inside the ship were several objects, cans of food, weapons, books, and others, sporting English writing. Even though no personnel was found on board or near the ship's location, this is indeed a very very serious finding, especially since the ship appears to be new, in perfect condition, and very recently used. While we found ample proof of the suspect's incompetence, the presence of a military vessel belonging to a hostile power can no longer be attributed to mere negligence. This is enough to prove that the suspect has been helped military or has helped military personnel from a hostile power enter the Reich and establish a base of operations, a conduct violating section eighty one of the Strafgesetzbuch, high treason against the Reich, punishable, of course, by death. We strongly advise further investigations in order to determine whether the Americana personnel still inside the Rex Commissariat. For the glory of the battle, an unguarded gate is an invitation for the enemy. And we have some PP to experiment with. I would like to do this one, though. Uh, reduce rations. 
They don't need food. Oh, we're not working on anything. Oh, pain me. Why do you pain me? Just crack those whips a little harder and that will get to it. I still want to continue investigating people, though. Hmm. Actually, do we have missing evidence, missing evidence? But we'll do werewolf training first. Gently swilling a mouthful of cognac. Hootig fixed Bear with a piercing glance. A corpulent old reprobate, reprobate across from him flinched a little, already shivering from the polar temperatures of the office dozen oscillating fans. Setting the glass down on the desk with just heavy enough to make it clink. Hootig asked his underling, why do we fight Bear? Bear stuttered as he searched for his answer. Hootig wanted uh, to achieve victory, Rex Commissar. Making Bear pale with a look of the utmost contempt. Hootig rose and began to pace around the room, followed by Bear's nervous eyes. Victory, yes, Bear, we seek victory. Victory for our beloved Reich, for our fear, and for the immortal science of national socialism. We fight so that we may purify this land, scour away the barbarity, savagery, and degeneracy of Africa, and erect a new edifice in its place. A monument to the Aryan will to prevail against all odds. Pure, Bear. We will make Africa pure. What... Would we do, however, if the unthinkable came to pass? If, against all probability, the barbarian should prevail? Er, <clears throat> uh, stuttered Bear as Hutig loomed over him. We must continue the fight, Bear. To the last man, we must make them pay for every inch of blood watered soil. If we cannot rule Ost Africa, nobody will. Hutig stood back behind his desk and took a seat. You will form a new unit comprised of our most skilled and trustworthy men. They will be known as the Wailwerfer. Well Ensure that, that they are trained in the sabotage, guerrilla warfare, and anti occupation tactics, speaking, uh, sparing Bear with another sharp glance. Hans continued in a subdued tone. Understand that this must be of the greatest secrecy. Although this is a contingency plan, we must not give the impression that we are in any way preparing for defeat. Pouring himself another glass of cognac, Hutig looked up to find Bear frozen in place. You are dismissed. A sob opened his mouth wide as though he had wanted to swallow all the air, all the earth, and all the men before him. He's got a big mouth. Oof. Let's see. Mm, reduce rations. Uh, really? I mean, we're not going to be able to really build anything before the war starts. I would like to promote loyalists, but I don't think we can. Yeah, minus 70%. Surrounded by degeneracy. That's really just killing a lot of the war support we can get. So I want to go ahead and maybe investigate Mueller some more. Maybe we'll do that. Followed with... Some more stability. Colonial Rewards Program. In order to bring our former enemies to our side, we shall begin a program of economic incentives to Anglo farmers and industrialists. Of course, only those who publicly display the support for the Reichs Commissar shall receive the subsidies. There is a second secret reward. Those who accept our rule and actively support us won't be persecuted and sent to the <clears throat> fun camps. Yes, I love the fun camps. More comments, though. Let's see. So our party here, as someone said, the genuine beautiful Ostafrikanische Angelgang Angelagen Heiten. Oh, there goes Madagascar. Oh, boy. Also, it means just General Bureau for East Africa and Affairs. East African Affairs. Let's see. Why is there a giant hole here? Because that's Congo Lake. We damned the place. We damned it really well. Wow, it's actually divided into three sections. Wow, that's actually really cool. Ah, National Socialist Science prevails again. And then someone recommends we use a TNO reskin submod. I didn't know there was a submod, so we'll see what happens. Can we do anything here to help these guys out? Like, I would actually like to send volunteers... Maurice, Maurice, what are you doing? Milch. I love colonial rewards. Let's go ahead. Ooh, 50. Make examples. I would like to make examples too, but... Uh, I want to do this one. Let's investigate Mueller and see what happens. Launching the Polakshia Schlicke Initiative, barely holding his excitement. Rex Gumasal Hans Hutig mounted the podium to join the guests of Anna Fritz, Fritz, Kyle, Fleikshot, and Heinz Schicker, two of the Reich's star engineers. It wasn't often he got the opportunity to work with men of the caliber and didn't intend to let the opportunity to use their genius go to waste. Arranging their assignment to him had taken years of lobbying, cajoling, and bribery until it would finally come to fruition. The TV cameras in the back of the vast concrete hall flashed to life as Hutig stepped in front of the turbine. After months of toil, the newly consecrated Preichschott Schlicker power plant will be brought online to send electricity flowing throughout us Africa's veins, bringing the savage land one step closer to civilization. Glancing over the gathered journalists and dignitaries who took, took a deep breath and began to speak, Germans, friends, citizens of the Reich, today we do more than simply flick a switch. Today we bring a spark from the sacred fire of Aryan civilization to Africa. With us, the latest in German innovation, we do what the degenerates and subhumans before them could not. We squash barbarism from this land. We shine a light in the chaos of the darkest continent. This is more than just a power plant. It is a symbol of our unwavering commitment to bring the glory of national socialism to Africa. So we continue for some time, extolling the virtues of of Preichschott and Schlicke. Not to mention, no mention was made of the dozens of slaves who had died in the construction. That's fake news. The dried blood stains that lurk beneath the pristine condition, or the pristine concrete. The children who had lost their fathers. 
all fake news. And it doesn't matter. Finishing his speech, Hutig flicked the switch for the cameras, and for a second it was paralyzed with fear. What if it didn't work? What if all the cut corners made it fail despite the tests? Would he be humiliated in front of the entire world? Would it be the end of his career? Sweat beating on his forehead. His normal, his normally so disciplined mind swarming with irrational anxieties. Hutig felt his fear arise as the seconds dragged by. Mercifully, it was soon over. Like a beating heart, the turbines thrummed alive. Keeping a tight hold of, on his expression, Hutig allowed himself an imperceptible sigh of relief. It worked. It worked. And for now, that's all that mattered. Like a flash of lightning in the clouds, we live in the flicker. As it's flickering on to. <sighs> Can't wait to find stuff about our other Rex Commissars. Less debt. Thank you. And, and we're not building anything, but whatever. Colonial information stations. Yes, please. In our effort to subtly control our new Anglo subjects, we shall launch the East African Broadcasting Company English Spoken Radio Channel to make them feel at home, almost at home. Of course, all personnel have been previously vetted and are fully adherent to the principles of national daddyism. The program will put our government under a bright light, and the location of the actual studios is a well, well, well kept secret. Uh, let's see, we have 15. Reduce rations. I'd love to do that, but I think we're going to have to wait. We got plenty of guns though, which is nice. We need more anti-tank, we need more artillery, we need more support equipment, we need more planes, we need we need more tanks. Actually, we're okay on tanks. But, ah, uh, just taking so long. Network, networking deals, eh? Anglos, why are they such degenerates, you know? Rex saw Hans Hutig pondered his question as he lurched over his usual hearty but austere meal of road Rulaiden and potato dumplings on the balcony of his palace. For once it was pleasantly cool, the sun seeming to have foregone its usual bite for the day. The glass of cognac had quickly become part of his every meal sat forgotten in his hand as he stared into the cloud of smog hovering over distant Quailmane. 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 <clears throat> Though they were a mongrel race, the parts that made up of the English jigsaw were sound. Centuries of Germanic emigration and intermixing with the Saxony, from Saxony, Jutland, Norway, combined with the Celtic blood of the early Britons. The Celts were, of course, being Germanic due to the distant origins, origins and the mountains of what would one day become Austria. And yet, despite the racial lineage, the old English regime had completely given themselves over to Judeo-Bolshevik degeneracy. He wondered why folk of such Germanic, strong Germanic blood had experienced such a total fall from grace. Taking a sip of cognac, who did curse the fact that the English had gotten to Africa before the Reich? Perhaps as a clean slate without the taint of judeo bolshevist degeneracy, we would have had an easier time teaching the subhumans to dance to the national socials too. Even now, the Anglos infested their former colonies like maggots and the rotting cops, rotting cops, or rotting corpse. And much to the consternation, his superiors would not allow him a free hand in dealing with them, though they sought to undermine the influence of the Reich at every turn. Scowling, Hutig recalled the letter and he had received that morning from Germania, apparently, as a token of good faith, those sutato. Pseudo degenerates wanted him to approve the airing of an English language radio program for the wealthy Anglo minority in Zambia and Zimbabwe. Well, if he had to, he had to. Still, who did promise himself he would not allow the Anglos to taint all African airwaves with their foul degenerate propaganda? Finishing his cognac, he resolved that all English language media to be produced would have to have scripts approved before airing and would have be closely monitored by the right political agents. They would have the radio show as long as they did exactly as they were told. For good or evil, mine is a speech that cannot be silenced. And I apologize for my mispronunciation of words in this episode. I, for some reason, words not working in my mouth. Agents classified to return from the operation in Leopoldville, and results are promising. Agent classified may manage to gain access to the apartment overlooking a small island near Congo Lake, or Rex Komosamulo, henceforth to be referred as to the suspect, was holding a feast together with his soldiers, among the other acts of debauchery which, though extremely unbecoming of an officer of his stature, held no criminal relevance, our operatives managed to get a high-resolution photo of the suspect drinking from a bottle with Glenlivet whiskey written on it. <clears throat> the label clearly refers to the Glenlivet distillery based in what now is the Republic of Scotland, and is relevant as the Reich has ordered an embargo against a nation almost 10 years ago, making it illegal to buy anything produced there. Sadly, we weren't able to discover whether the bottle had been brought or bought by the suspect before or after the embargo was put in place, but should the latter be proved, this could clearly be a case of alcohol smuggling, and it's well known that no one gets such goods if not from the gates of Brittany by paying the government a lot, a conduct violation section 334 of the Strafgesetzbuch, giving bribes in relation to section 335A of the Strafgesetzbuch for an official's and punch both up to 10 years in a concentration of goodness. We advise further investigations in order to discover whether the suspect still holds more illegal goods or has obtains to obtain ease through them through illegal measures. For the glory of the bottle and the weak souls, easy prey for decadence. And we lost a bunch of pee-pee, but that is no matter to us. We're going to lose even more pee-pee. Oh, boy. And the video Oberwachungslang. Cool. 
Finally, we can find a use for our new electric power line through the implementation of the Video Oberwachungsanlage, or investment for indirect surveillance. This program, which involves setting up thousands of modern cameras all throughout the Reichskommissariat, will soon be implemented in the following months, as soon as the materials arrive, of course. For now, we shall install a prototype in Quellamain to immediately begin tests and potential improvements. Ah, oh, better guns. Absolutely. We must have the best guns. I mean, 15 factories, not bad. Seven military factories cranking out. Nice. One, one. Oh, we need more of this, more of this, more of this. Not bad, not bad. We have a whole one jet fighter. Could be better, could be worse. Chemicals for guns? Yes, please. We're going to need a lot of guns where we're headed. Loads of guns. Actually, how many guns do we have? We have almost 10,000. That's so good. Beautiful, my friends. Eastern, oh, East African broadcast. Taking a sip of water to wet his throat before the broadcast went live, Ted Conway took a furtive glance at the man in the corner. He looked almost comical perched there on a high stool in his heavy uniform, glaringly, or glaring balefully around the room, his arms crossed and a permanent scalp plastered on his face. The craggy old devil reminded Conway of a ventriloquist doll. He almost smiled at the realization before he remembered that this man had the power to have him killed in dozens of unspeakably horrific ways. Paling, he snapped his gaze back to the soundboard and put his headphones on. As the recording of the box... Brandenburg Concerto came to an end. Which one? That's the most important question. The red actual sign flicked to life. Glancing down at the script, Conway took a deep breath and began. Good morning, Rex Commissary of South Africa. Welcome to East African Broadcast. I'm your host, Ted Conway. Joining me is my co-host, Douglas McSweeney. Thanks to the benevolence of Rex Commissary Hutik, we have been granted a license to broadcast an English-language radio show to bring news, entertainment, and the word of our Rex Commissary to you every weekday at 5 o'clock. Today, we have a special bulletin on the ongoing and enormously successful electrification of the rural East Africa, followed by a report on the unprecedented economic stability the policies of Reichskommissar Hutik has allowed us to enjoy. Doug took over, reciting the carefully prepared propaganda they had been delivered half an hour before the show. By God, being a Nazi mouthpiece made Conway feel dirty. Still, it was a paycheck, even if there was the constant threat of mysteriously disappearing should he ever slip up. He looked surreptitious surreptitiously at the sour old dude in the corner trying to gauge his reaction but he looked just as bitter as usual it made him uneasy Conway sighed out of his nose carefully careful not to let the mic pick it up then gathering his strength he launched into explosively buoyant praise of the Rex Commissar's newest la mine expansions while the dream disappears life continues painfully Get your free TVs! As a measure to improve morale and quality of life for all members of the superior races, be they Germans, Boers, or Anglos, the government shall subsidize a campaign to get a free TV to every household with it. They will be able to watch all the channels broadcasted from Germany, both entertainment and culture. Of course, what they don't know is that each and every appliance has been fitted with a hidden microphone connected to the wiretapping branch of our security services. With this, they will be able to control everyone inside and outside of their private sphere. I love it! I love it, love it, love it. Pulsing through the cities of Ost Africa like blood through the veins of some vast slumbering beast, electricity slowly brings forth a spark of light across the dark continent. Only a fool, however, would think that Hans Hutig electrified his five out of good intentions. Sitting in his office at the enormous mahogany desk, kept glacially comfortable by a dozen oscillating fans, Hutig flicked through a folder of maps of major Ost African cities. Quillamain, Salisbury, Dar es Salaam, marked out in bright red circles across each city were the locations of the new network of surveillance cameras that a battalion of slaves <coughs> were already hooking up to the modern electrical grid. They were designed to give a comprehensive view of major intersections as well as government buildings and areas considered to be potentially hotspots for sedition. This was but the first phase of the plan, Hutik thought with concealed glee. He had already placed another order with Siemens for a hundred mole, or a few hundred mole. Also, Africa was plagued with unrest from the barbaric Simian natives and the seditious Anglo colonists, but they had to have significantly less success stirring up trouble for the Reich when he had laid eyes on every street. Machines never erred. <coughs> Machines were never disloyal. Once Hans had machines watching over all of Ost Africa, he could finally breathe easy knowing that any threat to national daddyism and the objectives of the Reich would be easily detected. Gazing down at his realm from above, he could find and squash the traitors like insects. Smiling with grim satisfaction, Hans Hutig laid back in his chair and was immediately assaulted once again by the mind-drain-inducing, teeth-rattling screech of the chair. And instantly, with, he seethed with rage. He tried everything to fix the gosh darn thing, and nothing worked. As a matter of fact, it seemed like it was getting worse. It was driving him to distraction, and he couldn't work with that awful r sound ripping across its eardrums like a thousand vicious knives. Centering himself, he decided to order a new chair from Germania and have a few more people whipped. He could not let something as ludicrous as a creaking chair affect him so, resolving to bolster his spots and discipline. Hutig told himself he'd indulge in even less luxury in the future, even as he poured himself a glass of cognac, just to calm his nerves. It looked at you with a vengeful aspect. Ah, someone of talent? Cool. 
and get your free TVs today. Followed up with, be happy or else. Our government and Rex Commissar Hutek, above all, exist to serve the Aryans brave enough to live in the lethal land to uphold our mission to expand the Laban's realm. In exchange for this protection, of course, we expect all Aryans to do their duty towards the Fuhrer and their entire race. Yet, there's some asking for more. Our colonial government is doing as much as it can to protect all those who swear loyalty to the swastika and the Reich of a thousand years. We won't tolerate egoists, defeatists, and worse than thou. That worse than all, reformers, all shall obey or they shall face the consequences of their disloyalty. Which we lose a little bit more political power, but I've been recommended that we should get as much stability as possible, especially during war, before war, after war, at all times, we need as much stability as possible. Also, I don't know if I said this already, there was a comment saying that, do I know what I'm going to do here? Oh, I know what we're going to do, and we're going to have a good time. We're going to have a great time. The best time for... Everyone who you consider people. Das Afrikanische Fahrensnetz. Supported by a vast underclass of slaves. Oh, the joyous slaves. Also, Africa has developed a comfortable, fat middle class of businessmen, specialists, and gentlemen, farmers, all chasing the dream of prosperity, and the colonies. Every year, more Germans trickle into Ost Africa's quietly growing cities like water down a drain, eager to seek their fortune. With them come new ideas, political ideas. Rex Komasar Hutig realized long ago that if dangerous thought is not uprooted when it sprouts, it will spread across the land like a vicious weed, corrupting all it comes into contact with. He had nothing but disdain for Ost Africa's intellectuals and petite bourgeois, uh, but he knew that unchecked that they could infect the rest of his domain with radical thoughts. Slave liberation? What foolishness! When their prosperity came off the backs of the Untermensch. Clearly, wealth and comfort made people think too much, and what better way to dole the development of seditious thought by, than by filling their minds with propaganda? Like a wildflower sprouting in the desert after an unexpected storm. The Ost African TV network sprung up overnight to pour entertainment, sports, and Hutik approved news into the minds of Ost Africa's more affluent citizens as a special demonstration of the Rex Commissar's benevolence. Brand new Siemens TV sets were given away free to all Aryan Anglo citizens so that they may all share in the bounty of the modern age. And so the Ost Africans took the TV sets into their homes like Trojans receiving a wooden horse, never suspecting that inside every TV set hid a concealed microphone recording their every word. Ost Africa would never be, would never near, or never need to fear sedition again, and all watched over by machines of loving grace. There's a taint of death, a flavor of mortality in lies. They're not lies, they're just happy little, not truths. The Ring of Fire. It's clear that all South Africa is like a beast surrounded by fire. All around, its enemies lurk in the shadows, trying to take advantage of our numerical inferiority. Like a swarm of bees bringing down a bear. Even our so-called allies can't be trusted. We need to increase the alert and tie us to all those who would perish alongside us in the eventuality of our defeat. Increasing our support among the superior races as much as possible. The fate of the Afrikanische or Afrikana areas depend on it. We get more uh, or support. Nice. Also, the thing for evidence here in our decisions tab, this thing... If we can get enough evidence, which we might be able to with Mueller, or even really, we should really focus honestly more on Shank, regardless. If we can get enough evidence, which it doesn't look like we have jack squat any of anything right now, which really sucks. We can help lower the penalties from Surrounded by Degeneracy, which I actually really, really want to do, but we'll see what happens, obviously. We shall see what happens. Can I get uh, some more guns? Not yet. So, oh, nice. Yeah, we definitely want to focus on this quite a bit. Army Reserve Training? Yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. And the Ring of Fire. A resilient spirit, spreading honey on his mother's homemade raisin bread, Godfrey Cumberdale plopped down in front of the new Siemens TV set and flicked it, flicked it on. After another day home from school, was fine as far as we're concerned, even if a vicious cold was a price he had to pay. Why? He'd need to learn German literature anyways. He was going to run the farm just like Papa. After what a ten-year-old boy felt like forever, an image finally popped up on screen at the stroke of seven o'clock. It was the usual start to the broadcast day, footage of the Reich and Ost African flies, flags flying side by side as Deutschland lead played an ear-blasting volume. Godfrey ignored the boring old songs he wolfed down his breakfast. Much to his irritation, the image cut to a shot of Rex Komasar Hute sitting behind a desk. Boring. Couldn't they just skip this and go straight to the cartoons? He wanted to watch the new episode of Captain Uber fighting the Judeo Bolsheviks. Citizens of the Reich began the Rex Komasar. I come to you today. And that was about when Godfrey stopped paying attention. Although he felt a twinge of guilt for thinking it, the Rex Komasar creeped him out. He looked like a porcelain doll, pl pallid and expressionless. While Godfrey got, got up to get a glass of milk, he listened absently to the Rex Commissar. He was saying that all projections for stability and economic growth had been massively overachieved, securing Ost Africa's place as one of the Reich's most prosperous regions. 
After that, he rattled off a list of figures and facts that made little sense to Godfrey as the image cut to shot short clips of new gadgets going on sale in the capital and smiling blacks going to work in the mines. Ah, they love it there. Sitting back down in front of the TV, Godfrey caught the final words of the Lexicon Star speech. Germans, also Africans, be proud for a great nation has proven the strength of national daddyism or national socialism against barbarianism. Together, we have created the most efficiently run state on earth. Onwards to the area of future. Those words sent a thrill through Godfrey. Of the Lexicon Star said everything was going well, then it had to be, right? At last, Captain Uba began and soon forgot all about that Rex Commissar and his haircut and his speech. I saw on that ivory face the expression of somber pride of ruthless power and craven terror. Hey, chemicals for guns! We got plenty of chemicals down here, son. Oh, yeah. Expand the mines? Yes, please. If we want to keep everything under control, we need to ensure both that what we have enough supplies for our weapon industry, and that the slaves do not have even an ounce of energy left to revolt in order to achieve these objectives. We shall further expand the mining concentration camperinos across our domains. With the tens of thousands of additional workers, we shall increase the production rate and our economic gains, which will surely be appreciated by the central government, and drastically reduce dissent as those with the potential to fight against us are too busy with their pickaxe to effectively do anything. I love civilian factories. As I said in Vicky 2, I love the slaverinos that can work for here. Hopefully it helps push us to get more social or political reforms so we can get even more wealth and power. Right? The Ring of Fire. I love the Ring of Fire. Yeah. Conscriptional? I, I thought we'd be like, you know, two-year draft, one-year draft. I thought it would be like service by requirement down here in the great lands of Ost Africa. But whatever. It is what it is. The ring of fire as the clocks chimed midnight. Oh, tick tock. Huan startled awake, almost falling out of his chair, his eyes painfully adjusted to the harsh white light set, still set for the evening paperwork. Feeling his stomach shift turbulently as he stood, he barely stumbled towards the dimmer uh, to dull the lights. Something back into his chair, Hotik told himself that overwork had led to him falling asleep at his desk. Obviously, it had nothing to do with the cognac he'd been drinking since breakfast. Temples thumping, he looked over at his desk, trying to remember what he'd been doing before he dozed off. It all came back to him in a sudden flash of incandescent fury. After dinner, he'd received a telegram from Germania, insisting that he s cease sending critiques of his fellow Rex Commissars. Ha <laughs> Pseudo degenerates in their plush Mitte offices had threatened him, suggesting his constant criticism of those incompetent buffoons was tantamount to treason. Hands shaking with rage, Hans poured a glass up to the brim with cognac, just to calm his nerves. How dare they say just that? Dr drowning his cognac, or downing it, relishing its bitterness, Hutig felt the fires of hatred grow in his belly. No, no, not could he only trust Germania. He was surrounded by enemies, each waiting to seek their knife into his, into his back. The treasonous dudes back in the other co Reich's commissariats. The traitorous bulls waiting for the opportunity to slip free of the Reich. The slippery Italians up north. It was like being surrounded by the ring of fire, the flames advancing, always advancing until the day they'd seal the flesh from his bones. He cannot allow the and traitors prevail. Hans leaned back slightly and immediately felt that horrific bone rattling creak in his chair stab into his brain like a million wicked needles. The blood rising to his face, something inside him finally snapped. Slowly he watched himself rise, grab the chair, and drag it outside of the balcony into the bracing night air, hauling it onto the marble power pat. Hutig used what remained of his strength and shoved the enormous leather chair off the edge. Staring into the lush blackness of the gardens, Hutig heard the chair shattered on the gravel below. Swaying from side to side, he lurched back inside and passed out on the office floor. His soul had gone mad, alone in the wilderness. It had looked within itself, and it had gone mad. Your enemies are our enemies. If we want to avoid an anarchy, we must convince all superior races that, in truth, we have all the same enemy. Let's hope human slaves... We employ in our factories, in our fields, in our very homes, all wait for the moment they perceive themselves as strong, and not a moment later. Then they will slaughter us like cattle, Germans, Boers, and even Anglos. If we want to survive, we need to stick together and present a united front, or a united white front, against the black menace, threatening to swallow us from within and without. Uh, council, huh? And, oh my goodness, we have a Jewish movement off our coast. Literally off our coast. Well, personally, I think that's really cool. Oh boy, I wonder if there's an event for Hans to say no, 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 no. Disastrous, oh boy. Well, saying supplies down there was a waste. Severe trading, moderate trading. All right, then. Let's cut down some more debt. I mean, I'm loving the economy here. It's not doing too bad, I'd say. Oh. Expand the mines. Exploiting the interior. Captain Marcus Viedman vomited into the underbush, nearly avoiding getting in getting it all over his uniform. While well, he had received his new orders, desperately hoping for a transfer to Quillamane, he had instead found himself sent to his border garrison to be the stinking crap hole mine at the edge of Ost Africa. Twenty demoralized reprobates to watch over hundreds of slaves, responsible for keeping the titanium flowing. It is no wonder he had spent most of his days in inebriated 
haze. Vagman wondered why he endured. Why didn't he just pull out of his Luger and put a bullet in his brain? After days filled to the brim with all the savagery and depravity the world had to offer, he was forced to relieve it all again or relive it all again in his dreams. Feeling as though he spent every second in the waking dream, Vibeman began to wonder if they were going mad, if he was going mad. And so it was that, staggering back to camp with his vomit on his boots, Vibeman was the first to see the men coming out of the trees. Suddenly, death didn't seem so favorable. As the men shouted in the unfamiliar language, Vibeman turned to run in the bushes, despite understanding in a sudden burst of clarity that he could not escape, that these were his final seconds on earth. Boots crunching in the hummus. He was finally reminded of the crunching of his boots in the snow as a boy in his native Turingia. He found himself drawn to, into a memory, tripping and falling into the snow. Blooding his nose against a rock. For a moment, he smelled the tweet of his father's coat as he was carried to bed. It was so long ago now. As the bullets ripped through him, roses of blood blooming on the front of his uniform, Captain Vidman fell heavily to the dankness of the floor's floor. As his eyes, empty eyes, stared up at the endless void between the stars, he was claimed by a more profound darkness. Did he love his life again in every detail during that supreme moment of complete knowledge? Maybe, maybe not. Your enemies are ah, enemies, of course. In which we get more political power, we lose some manpower. That's okay. Hundred, a hundred for one. It's clear that the most important issue with local descent is our crushing and numerical inferiority. We cannot hope to keep everything under control with our limited garrison, no matter the level of our training, equipment, or sheer loyalty to the regime. We are perhaps literally outnumbered a hundred to one. We need additional manpower. The best way to achieve this task is to enlist the help of those non-Aryan, non-Aryans who have every reason to stay loyal to us, or else risk losing everything to a local uprising. The daddy is dead. Quillemaine mourned as every other city in the Reich had did when they received the news of the fears passing. Flags flew at half mast. Men and women swept in the streets. Marching bands paraded a somber tune. The Reich's commissar himself gave a speech to party members in the assembly. For one day in the Reich's African jewel, all of its sons and daughters paid homage to the man who had returned home or returned Germany to her place in the sun. Operative word for one day. No more, no less. Quillemaine and Ost Africa will return to tomorrow morning. For the Aryan people are strong and need only weep once before marching once towards the future they are destined to inherit. Hans Hutig will see that to full well. Grief but in moderation. I'm not clicking on that. I'm not clicking on that. How many more days? Oh, god dang it. Well, I want to do 100 for 1, which I've heard is what we need to do before the war starts, but we might not be able to get there because now that daddy is dead. Um, we'll see. Hopefully we are okay enough. I would like to do more of this stuff, but uh, we can't even work on stuff anyway, so it sucks. <clears throat> now that, my friends, is quite a bit of lag. As you see on screen, it's completely frozen. Oh, crap. And so it begins. I hope we're ready. <laughs> I hope we're ready. I just want to get through the next focus. At least I've heard that this focus is uh, 100 for 1 is really sort of important for us to do. But we'll see what happens. Oh no, our funds are at 7 million. Oh no. Chaos in Austin, of course. Come on. At least give me the 100 political power. 100 for 1, please, please, please. And as soon as he plays Austin, I play as Austin a lot. I heard there's like a 12 way civil war that'll happen eventually, so. We'll see. <clears throat> wow, that is some extreme lag. Woof. Hans Spado, that. Degenerate trader purging our troops. <sighs> now, what do we want to do here? Um, in the meantime, conscript more workers. No, we have a, quite a bit of war support. Look at that 21 percent. Holy cow! I don't mind doing this because I want to get slightly more stability for now. So, I want to do that. Is there anything else that gives us more stability? Not really. Resources from Germany, booby trap areas, which probably would be actually really good to do. End of resources. Oh no, oh boy. Well, I want some more political power or stability there, so we'll do that. And I want to maybe thoroughly investigate Shank, maybe. Even though I would like to do these guys as well. Secure funding? Uh, we, let's grab some, some funding first, and then we can build up our liquid reserves or really just political power. So, we have that. Spilling into the room, the golden light of morning jolted Hutig awake, forces, forcing his eyes open, breaking the crust that had formed. He gazed up at the whitewashed ceiling. After a moment, he wiped away the sticky tear residue that clung to his cheek and looked around. Somehow he ended up in bed. Had someone carried him there after he passed out in his office? He felt his cheeks burn with a shame, both from the indignity of being treated like a child and the added humiliation that everyone in the palace had probably already heard about it. He had something like a jackhammer. Hans lay in bed for over an hour, staring up the ceiling. He would have to reestablish his authority. He heard a tentative knock at the door, although he didn't respond, and he heard a creak open, and turned to see who dared disturb him. Bea, fawning, shuffling towards him. Hans wanted to yell at him to get out, but he just couldn't summon his energy. All he could do was croak, tell me what you want. All right, Skomasaw, allow me to extend my deepest empathies, or sympathies, that you've been taken ill, began Boa, sycophantic, as ever, before he was stopped by Hutig's stare, piercing contempt. Even mired in the pits of the worst hangover of his life, he knew he still held power in the, in, over the distinguished, disgustingly corpulent 
lick spittle. Er, uh, while the General Bureau are concerned about the commitment of our Boer allies, I knew to bring it to you immediately. Yes, Latutik, so that you might squeeze a few kudos out of me. Pathetic. Must you bother me with every little thing, demanded Hutig, scratching the leaf, turning it to glare Bea. It is simple. Emphasize, emphasize to them in a propaganda campaign that we fight the same fight, that we are the same enemies, the natives. They seek to destroy everything we've built to annihilate the air and future. We will bring the Boers closer to us. Use whatever resources you need. Now get out of my room. Bea obsequiously bowed out of the room, thanking Hutig for his wisdom. Hutig frowned after him. Wondering if it was time to put the bear out of the pasture or into a grave. As a leader, the men watched. The men who seemed most loyal to you were the ones to watch. Groaning, Hutik fell back to continue staring at the ceiling, wondering if he'd find a new chair waiting for him in his office. After a while, feeling a little better, he telephoned for breakfast. The most you can hope for is some knowledge of yourself that comes too late. We might need to keep this political power just in case, too. I really don't know. Expansion to Africa. Oh boy. Oh. All right. And I'm seeing that a lot of this place is demilitarized. War's uprising. Oh boy, things are things are happening. It's happening. Ah, the Africa Shield. To say that things in North Africa are moving quickly would be an understatement. Officials in Quillamane are working without sleep, racing between government buildings and military barracks. With the death of Hitler and the dawn of a fr fratricidal slaughter home, lines of communications and supplies have become precarious at best. Every hallway smells of military cigarettes, and the countless office fans are working even harder than any clerk or messenger. In the middle of all of it, like a trunk among a million twisted roots, is Hans Hutig. He stands over his desk, apparently out of his bed, looking at scrawled memos, updated frontier maps, and stained ledgers. All the detritus of an empire in crisis. Quietly, he opens one of its filing cabinets and pulls out a slim folder. Written along the top of in small black lettering is Not fall in Zadsplan, Africa Shield. He looked over it and takes a breath. A deep breath. This is what must be done. He goes back to his desk and picks up the phone. Put me to to Winhook and Leopoldville. Awesome. Yeah, we're going to end up in a war very, 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 very soon. Hidden heroes. Oh, we lost some stability. Oh, look at this. Oh, Central Africa wants to assume leadership? Huh. Okay, that's not us. I saw Rex Commissariat, so I'm like, oh, boy, is that us? Oh, I hope not. Ah, we stand together, brothers, until we make a gigantic uh, Rex Commissariat. So we'll see what happens. Serbs rise up. Ah, I love Auslan. At this point, I'm going to get, spend more from the military. Actually, did it just happen? No. Okay. Oh, any day now. Any day now. I hope we can hold. Holy crap. They got a lot of divisions. They have a bunch of divisions. Holy cow. But then again. Oh, there we go. Which is very nice to see. Um, it's South African War. Perfect opportunity. Oh, oh there's a little bit of lag there. I wonder if we could just do it like this. I want to focus over here and maybe try to cut them off. I don't. I'm just gonna even abandon that. Oh, Austin just, just crap the bed. Like holy cow. <laughs> um, fight for our home. Actually, they don't have a focus tree, huh? That's oh, up seventy divisions. They got way more manpower than us. Bull support staff returns home. By holes and bugle hole are underway. The call goes out over an isolated radio frequency, bouncing from Lusako to Maputo to Quillamane, carefully encoding so as not to alert the South Africans. When the next commissar gets a message, he smiles for he knows its meaning. Two groups of surplus, Hanomag carriers, are de departing from the isolated jungle training camps, heading for the border. Aboard them are dozens of South African boars that are dragged and tired from the hard training, but also confident in their newfound skills for the boars. As a chance to defend the families, their homes, their heritage, and frost Africa, it's another dagger in the Cape Town side. When the transports reach the border, the German officers and boar trainees wave goodbye to one another. They've grown friendly over their lives long weeks spent on the Ost African frontier. Then they shoot their local smugglers, <laughs> dump their bodies in a nearby river. Can't be too careful. Our knives are sharpened. Actually, at this point, I might consider having a fr uh, front line. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I want to circle and destroy the enemy soldiers as fast as possible. That's probably the main goal here. Like, I want to cut these guys off. Get us to here. The time is now. Oh, boy. Normally, at this t in a moment like this, Hans Utig would be fairly deep in a, a super. He spends most nights like this, dulling the waves of fury and annoyance that constantly ripple through his mind. But not tonight. Tonight. He is sitting in a command center beneath Quillamane at the head of a crowded table. His officers are bickering about which battalion has been set where, which what squadrons are most vital for interdiction, and whose plan would save the race or doom the nation. Aides man the phone lines that line the walls, sending coded messages out into the field. Everyone knows what they're here for. 
and the boards have taken up arms, declaring a new great truck. And the South African blacks have attempted to throw off Cape Town's chains. All three will fail. Tonight, all South Africa and her allies will go to war. All eyes slowly turn to Hutig. He allows himself to save this moment for mastery. From here, all the chaos and bloodshed and misery to come is just an arrogance, an arrangement of markings on a map, and he will control all of it. I oh, they join the shield. We go to war. I hope that this does not change the focus tree. We have nine days. I think we can wait nine days, maybe. Can we wait nine days? Let's wait. I want to get this done first. I don't know if it's going to change the focus tree because I've heard this one's really, really good to get for 100, 100 for one. So we're going to get that. Okay, then. Never mind. We'll just go in anyways. I don't care about these guys too much. Um, well, screw it. We're going in then, I guess. No, it did change it. Ah, dang it. I should have waited, but there's nothing I could do. Urgh. Now it begins. With the first opening shots, the state of war has officially begun between the African Shield and South Africa and their Americana puppeteers. Exactly like 20 years ago, proud Aryans faced once more an overwhelmingly superior enemy with no other weapon than her superior will. And exactly like 20 years ago, we shall prove to these foolish people the superiority of the master race. Mobilize the forces of the last man, bring forth the panzers, bring forth the bombers and the cannons. For Fuhrer and Vatalan, we have laden a Siegen like sign. Oh, so we get any new options? Resources are pretty much done. Booby trap the border. Well, that's pretty much done and over. Even though I thought I did. Increase. Oh, increase traps. Okay. Uh, the main goal is to not lose Mozambique. So, uh, we will actually see here what happens. Anything up here? No. Okay. Maybe we should stop trading and have you guys actually go on to do this stuff. I need to put some soldiers down here, but let's kill these guys off up here first. Go, 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 go. We have no soldiers, but that's okay. We've been putting them in reserve. Nice. All right, we're going to go right here. We're going to get rid of all these enemy divisions as fast as possible up north. And then focus down here a little bit more. Actually, I'm, I'm going to have to race at least one division down here. Uh, it doesn't really matter who it is. Uh, let's see. Lieben, Liebe Henschel. Screw it, I'm going to take two divisions. One infantry, one of you guys do. There you go. Go, 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 go. All right, they've been cut off. We're going to go straight through here and kill every single last one of them off. Nice. You know what? You do the same here, too. Cut them off, cut them off, cut them off, cut them off. Go, 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 go. I love Africa. I love Africans. Liquid reserves? Ah, oh, I hope we've got a lot of gas. Okay, they're dead. If we can move fast enough, they can't do anything, so. The shield united... The drums of war beat even louder, giving us greater bonuses. Mobilize. Ooh, war economy. I don't want to lose political power, though, so... The shield united. As a main proponent of the Africa shield, it's also Africa's duty to coordinate the joint war effort of the German Reichs Commissariats in the Dark Continent. Divided, we are weak, but united, no one will stand against us and our combined strength. It's time to forget about those past grievances and fight together against a common enemy. Aryan brothers all across Africa, answer the call. Für Führer und Vaterland, lasst uns gegen den Feind vereinen. Thank goodness I took some German classes. When I was in high school and college. Now it begins. Rex Komosa Hutig strutted into the meeting hall from with, in which a grand war planning station had been established. All around him, officers in uniform walked to and fro with a true sense of urgency, communicating points of updated information or passing off newly minted documents. Despite the nerves that lingered within him, Hutig could almost bounce with excitement. This was his element and it was showtime. The Rex Komosa proceeded to the grand table in the center of this converted meeting hall, upon which a large, impressively detailed map sat, speckled with different icons representing the locations of all African forces in the field. A posse of generals stood rigidly at attention around the map and snapped a salute to Hutig as he approached. Hutig swiftly gave his short salute in return, as they all stood at ease and got to the business of the day, the business of warfare. Gentlemen, let us not waste any time with officialities or pleasantries today. We have to. We have a war to fight. Hutig began, wasting not one moment, er, arriving to his point. Currently, where do we stand? We got our, our vulnerabilities. Where and where? He finished staring at his generals as they looked to one another for the answer, following such an unexpectedly rapid commencement of business. Zambezi River, eh, sir, piped up old General Lieutenant, or General Lieutenant. We have token forces ready to respond to the crossing, but if the South Africans arrive in force, they may break through. Hutig waved his hand dismissively at the general. They'd be throwing themselves into a waste of force and savages. If that's what they wish to expand, expend their forces at conquering, then so be it. He retorted, The Boers and the Africans have the Africans nasty preoccupied at this moment. I want to know where we can attack. Several of the generals in the room murmured amongst one another unsuspectedly, as if they never conceived the notion that their superior would have wished to order an attack three minutes into the first meeting of the war. As Hutig began to deliver an icy, vexed stare at the generals, a group in fear quickly piped in the SS divisions of Abanta and Jaeger. Stand ready for any operation, sir. You only need to say where and when. Hutig smiled at his response. Then let it be so, he replied jovially. Pointing at the South African coast upon the map, he finishes set his orders. They won't see a single moment of rest against us. Not one. They will relearn the meaning of Blitzkrieg. 
Cry havoc and let slip the dogs of war. Here we go, boys. Well, we're actually already in it, so. Oh, we're getting attacked too, eh? How about you hold it and how about you hold it? Just hang out for now. Well. Okay, you're beating him up anyways, that's fine. Uh let you guys finish up your duties here first. Hopefully we don't lose too much of Mozambique. Oh, you guys are alright, let's do that then. Alright, never mind then. Uh, you guys, there's only two of you guys, so good luck. I hope you, don't, you guys don't die down here, and maybe you should make sure we have planes as well. Even though I don't think there's that many air bases around here, but hey, I could be wrong. We have three whole jet fighters. Alright, you have three men in the air. Do the best you can, Godspeed, and I'll see you on the other side, wherever that may end up being. Alright, we won that battle pretty nicely. Oh, actually, can we move fast enough that we can go right right here? Let's go here, here, here. Oh. Oh. Hey, we sent a convoy. Hey, nice job, guys. And where are the ships? I'll do this too. Just in case, go ahead and repair if you need to. I'm totally okay with that. Anything else here different or new? Evidence? No, I think it's... Uh, more funding would be probably pretty good. We have $17 million already, though, so. Nice. Oh! Oh! Bowman! That was probably the fastest I've ever seen AI Bowman uh, get conquered. Holy crap! Goring went mad! Even before Hadrish died! Holy. What is going on over there? Are you mad? Yes! Very much so! More attack, please. Thank you. Uh, hold for now. Hold, 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 hold. Uh, you guys, what's going on down here? You still might be able to break through here. You just hold the line. Good. We're going to try to encircle as fast as we possibly can. Come on, go, 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 go. Come on, infantry. Jesus Christ, you are so slow. Alright, we're in. Go ahead and start beating them up. Treat them how we do the natives, maybe? Good. Go up north. Go up north. They can't stop these motorizing tanks. Oh, we're actually attacking down south, too. Okay. Wait. Uh, Cape down. Yeah, we gotta get Cape down. How's this looking over here? Uh, you guys go there. And you all do this, this, this. To there, maybe. Good luck. Ah, uh, two more divisions. Two enemy divisions completely encircled. Oh, no. It's six enemy divisions. Holy cow. That's a lot of divisions. Uh, what's going on here? You guys are helping at the attack. That's fine with me for now. Um, you guys do that. I want you to encircle this this guy right here. Go, 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 go. Seven divisions, not even six. It's seven. Holy crap! That's so good. Get rid of them. Just defend down there for now. Yeah, this is definitely easy mode. You hold it and spread yourselves out where you need to go. Send only one of you that way. Oh boy, what's going on? Nice. Another convoy sunk. Ooh, this is, this is pretty risky. Uh, I don't mind actually retreating this way. Algerian War. Cool, not bad. Yep, there goes Serbia. Go and retreat. There's no shame in retreating when it's smart to do. Whew. We got out of there. Nice. Uh, actually, I'll probably both beat these people up. There we go. Alright, let's get these guys down. Uh, I wonder if we just like move over there to Cape Town. You guys keep these guys in place. That'd be great. Well, looks like we're beating up Cape Town. Alright, well, we're going to do that. Well, let's see if that works. We actually sunk some enemy ships. Beautiful. Even our navy is pretty darn good, I'd say. Not even upgrades, Wilhelm. Oh, yes, you do. Lancer, torpedo, consumement. Let's go with consumement for now. And retreat chance, just in case. Love it. Beautiful. Oh, they, oh the Americans have arrived. That's not good. Go straight. No, no, no. I want you to go to Cape Town, son. 
Now, what happened to the idea going over here, maybe? Alright, so stop attacking. I want you to hold. Uh, well, hold where we need to go, really. Oh, you're actually defeated over here. Oh, the American tanks have arrived. That's so not good for us. Well, head on in. Make him lose it. Make him lose it. I want you both to hold for now. No, that's not good. Come on, you've got to win down there. Why are you not winning? Guys, you got more than enough tanks over there. Send you down here, too. Oh, hey, another division. Nice. Well, they won't do that. We're going to lose. <laughs> The last sighting, a stormy hit night in the South Atlantic. A suit vessel African patrol boat minor in the waters the waters off the coast of Alexander Bay is periodically hit by waves from the bow, watching over the vessel. In the light of a thunder strike, one of the crew spots something and motions to the captain. The sighting is confirmed to his horror. He starts relaying an emergency message to the Kriegsmarine commanding in command in Luderitz. Many vessels of various types, markings are known. He tries to give off as much information as, po as possible into a broadside of a Mark 42 guns and his broadcast permanently. The report, though brief and vague, sets off a scramble across Africa as a massive effort to confirm the report is undertaken. Eventually, as an aerial reconnaissance flight returns with the pictures that send an enormous wave of dread throughout the entire shield, there can be no doubting it now the Americans arrive with their sixth fleet. Gone is any semblance of German's naval superiority. Shattered are any dreams of ending this war through a quick and daring naval invasion of the cat. The seas belong to the crusaders, cruisers and frigates of the American Navy and skies to the flights of aircraft lying on the decks of the carriers. The fleet is of such size that no one would dream of it taking it on with the ships of the shield. And one stroke it appears the Americans have achieved victory at sea for the South African War, but the war will be won on land. Oh, well, crap. Uh, nope, I'm not even looking on that yet. If we can just win in Cape Town. Come on, go, 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 go. I said help them out. You should be able to win here. You should absolutely be able to win here with two divisions taking out a military division. Just hold the line. Hold the line. Uh, try to help attack here. Crap. God dang it, they're so strong. I can't pierce American armor. Ugh, Americans. Shield United, good. Assessor Industries. Uh, generals. Uh, I'll go with Industries. To say that industrial development across Central Africa and Sudwest Africa is disappointing is an understatement. Their ill-managed factories can barely support the garrison as they are. It's a miracle that they even have em enough ammo to shoot. This has become increasingly frustrating, but the needs of the war are more important, and so we shall send economic advisors to our brothers and to help them in the arcane art of actually making a gosh darn factory work. I'll help them out. Help them out. As long as the American tanks don't move, we'll be okay. Uh, there's no time for this stuff. Is there anything up north? No. Oh, photo of... Okay, now it's finally here. Okay, that took forever to get. Booby trap? No. Come on, come on, come on. As it goes down, it goes up. A letter from Moody. A letter was written by a shaky cursive of that kind of old woman. Kind of a kindly old woman. My dear boy, Walt. I must admit the house seems empty without your laughter or your stomp. Oh, Walt, well, it seems silly, but sometimes I hear it. Tramping in through the front door, those big boots of yours, you'd make the carpet all muddy, and I'd spend the whole afternoon cleaning your mess. I have so much time now without your bed or rug or dishes to clean, so I picked up the hobby of knitting. I'll tell you, this winter will be cold. I felt in that fall chill this morning. I made a nice cap for Stefan and I. You can have one as soon as you get back. You'll need it. Germany will feel like the North Pole after being in all that jungle. Some of the girls in the Women's League are quite good, and my mother used to knit all the way into the night before the war. Hopefully we'll be back soon, and all is well in Africa, I suppose. The fatherland is as welcoming as ever. Your endlessly loving mother, Gutrude. A tear rolled down Walter's cheek. Not a single letter had made it into Africa since the first shots rang in Berlin. But now the first mail plane in a year had touched down in Windhoek, and with it the stories of tens of thousands of mothers before the Great War are up to back home, before the Burger Creek upended life in totality. Germany's silence absolutely 100% broken. Oh, God, they don't want me to take this place. Oh, oh, God, this is not good. Oh, we can't manage to lose this. You know what, I'd rather lose, not take Cape Town, and not get these guys surrounded. Oh, they're, they're assaulting us. Oh, crap, that's not good. Hold for now. Hold the line. Hold the line. South Africans will perish in this. They've lost a lot of guys. How many men have we lost? Oh, we have no manpower. Let's go do this too then. Not bad. We got still some manpower left. Get your grubby tanks out of here, America. Oh man, they are really attacking. We need some help here. Well, I don't think there's anyone we can really ask for help though, so. Spare the soldiers for now. Defend, defend, defend. Yeah, beat those American tanks. Beat them up. Beat them up. We can retreat for now. Let them come in. Don't waste your those, don't waste your strength. Don't waste your strength. I 
I said wait and hold, you dinguses. God dang it, I hate that. You just can't tell him. I know there's a front line here, but still. It'd be so much easier if it just... It was more manageable this way. God, beat those American tanks. You still want to attack, huh? My goodness. They are crazy. You know what? But America's going to heavily pay for this in popular support, which is good. Which is actually pretty reassuring for us, so. You know, we were so close. So close to doing well here. Pan those American tanks down. You should be able to break through them, right? Well, we might not have anti-tank on our guys, too, though. Uh, no. We can't pierce them at all. So, everyone here, hold. Good. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Let's boost it up. Cut down that. Span, 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 span. There we go. That should help us a lot a little bit more. Wait. What the hell's going on? You guys keep these guys in place for now. Keep them in place. Keep them in place. We gotta get these motorized down here quickly. We can defend over the river. Come on. Don't get us encircled. For the love of God, don't get us encircled. Move your trucks faster. Come on. God dang it, you pieces of garbage. I did this perfectly, and it's still a bunch of crap. Come on. Force the attack. At this point, it doesn't matter. Force the attack. You have got to kill them off, or you're just going to die here. Oh my god. Seriously. This is so stupid. This is this supposed to be easy? Pfft, come on. That is retardedly stupid. I'd rather lose the entire division at this point. I'd rather lose them. Yeah, we just lost them. So, I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. Tanks are overpowered, man. You can't do anything against them at all. Force it. Screw it. Who cares at this point? Jesus Christ, that's so stupid. Do we have any... We have nothing. We literally... All we have are guns. My God, I am ready to blow America up so badly. Get the hell out of here, you pieces of crap. Force the attack. Kill them off. Come on. I am pissed off, as you can tell now. I am really pissed off at this. So stupid. So incredibly stupid. There's no reason we should have lost another division. Absolutely no reason. Find them and kill every single one of these pieces of garbage off. Sister Industries. Man, that, that I'm sorry. That just pissed me the hell off, so. Uh, send equipment, assistant generals, will assist generals. Unlike us, the other ex-commissars have mainly neglected the keeping an efficient general staff. As a result, the forces are lagging behind and finding it difficult to coordinate across long distances, with the generals unable to properly lead units distant hundreds of miles from their command tents. While there will be ample time to talk about the shameful behavior when the war is won, and we will not forget to remind our brothers of that. There are more urgent matters to attend to, and for now we shall send aides with enough support, equipment, and personnel to help with the other generals to better coordinate the war effort, but I'm going to end the episode here because I need to take a break from this. Holy cow. That pissed me the hell off, but regardless, if you enjoyed the episode, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when we will win this South African war and destroy every single American here. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.